you want to see something shocking? I've got trousers on. Do you want to see something equally as shocking? It's covered. I think I have to pan out for this. Or we've got this. So we've got an SWA feeding this box. Obviously it's not glanded as you can see. Uh, I, I, I can't say it's undersized because it's only a small arm. But, um, that appears to be a 16mm I'm, I'm gonna guess it's an earth cable they've taped up that goes into this service head. Tags have been cut off. So they've obviously removed the tails. They've put their own cables in. They, they must have used an earth cable for the phase. And they've they probably had a bit of black. He is, he is black. Which is weird because I can only imagine this has been done recently. But they had they had some black meter tails from somewhere. Um I don't know what's going on there. They've they've obviously instated that Henley block and they've just God knows what. But that's that's nothing. Are you ready for this? Now that goes into here, so it's feeding the socket, you know, maybe like a 20 amp, 16 amp sort of MCB. You know, you're gonna go, oh there's no RCD, oh you're really annoyed, blah blah blah. That's that's kinda like worst case scenario you're gonna be thinking again. No. We have nothing. We have a 60947-3 isolator, which doesn't give a shit if it's using too much, so it's got no overload. And it's got no short circuit current cut off. It's uh, it's just an isolator. It's overload protection is going to be by this, which it says 100 amp. I don't know. It could be 60. I haven't pulled out and had a look. I'm not allowed to pull out and have a look, but it could be a 60. It could be a 100. It's overload and short circuit is governed by this, but it appears to be on. I'm going to say it's a 2.5s free core SWA. Anyway, I think the best thing to do here is uh. I think it should stay off, don't you? And let's lock that cupboard. I'll see if I lock him off properly later on. I'll have to let the customer know they can't use that. So the job today, by the way, it's like lunchtime. I couldn't film earlier because it was absolutely hammering it down. That dust sheet, I, was, I had it over there, it was like a 10, and it didn't work very well. Just to try and keep all my gear dry, but it hasn't worked. I'm gonna probably have to put like WD-40 over it. I've ruined my tools. But it's, to be honest, it's a, Apart from the weather, it's actually been quite a nice job. It's, it's nice when someone sort of... Look, look at the garden. Look at that. It's lovely. And I'm putting lights in, so this is the sort of job I like to do, regardless of the weather. So my job is... Can you see this here? They, they call it the gazebo. I don't think you can call it a gazebo or some sort of canopy or whatever you want to call it, but they can have two lights. On the opposite side of that, you can't actually see it. I've just run the wiring down. I don't think you can see the wiring, but you can have two lights either side of that. It's just to light up that little area down there. There might be some stuff happening later on, on another day, on another job, but for the time being we're going to be putting two lighting circuits in. So you've got those two lights, and you're going to have, just behind these railway sleepers here, I'm going to find some little tiny dinky 10 watt floodlights, LED, and they're going to be, there's going to be three of them, one, two, three, and they're just going to light up this sort of shrubbery, this, this sort of bush area here, so that fence is going to get illuminated. We're going to use some sort of like 2700K LED lights, nice warm light. Sort of like a almost sort of yellow slash amber type light. I think they look really nice outside. Anything I don't like white lights outside. It looks too clinical. You want some sort of sunset type relax in your garden. Yellow light out here. So basically, that's the two jobs. I was going to put a socket over there, but that's not happening anymore because it's 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 out of the way. You can't you can't get to it. So what we're going to do is this naughty one that I disconnected. We're going to replace him. We're going to bury that wire and I'm going to bring the other cable into the building like I said and we're going to um, just put it into the fuse board into an RCBO and bish bash bosh make it all, make it all safe so we'll do that, we'll change that crap one for like a nice double socket Let's talk clipping so it's, it's, it's a bit sad right but I'm, I'm a bit particular when it comes to clipping so I thought someone was watching me I thought it was a bit, I'm a bit particular like when I use armoured I, I hate it's a, it's a pain. I hate when you see an armoured <coughs> pardon me that someone's used countersunk screws with and no washers I'll, I'll go with the countersunk screws sometimes I have to use them but you've got to have a washer because otherwise the screw the head of the screw is just going to go straight through the PVC clip I see it all the time an armoured's a big heavy cable Eventually it's going to work its way off the uh, head of the screw. So you've got to put a washer on it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to whiz the camera around. I'm just going to show you how I do it. So it sounds stupid, but I, I use a dome-headed screw. I know it sounds pathetic. I mean, it's, the screw's a screw, but I think a dome-headed screw looks a little bit nicer on a washer. So if I'm going to use a cleat, washer, 
diameter screw and to be fair doesn't that look a lot nicer yeah much better job I'm so used to seeing stuff in a garden, I didn't really pay much attention to it at first, but when I did start to trace it, so what you've got is you've got a 13 amp plug top, they've kept the, the paper on it, so obviously it's, it's disintegrated in the rain. A uh, little tip is you are supposed to take that off because that, that is a fire hazard to be on a plug. Um, what is that? Is that heat damage? I don't know. Anyway, it's twin enough, it goes up, it emerges over here, and that's right. That is right. There's a four way lead in the garden running twin enough. Love it. Okay, so this is new to me. This is this is a new product. Hang on, let's turn around. I'll show you the cover. Now I don't want to rave about it too much because I don't really want to steal the idea from someone else. The only reason I'm using this today is because I watched a YouTube video literally this morning and it was DSS Electrical if you want to look them up and they use this, it's called Quinetic now it's from a company called TLC it's, a, it's an electrical wholesaler and I use them all the time I'll be honest, these were never on display so when I was in there and I was waiting for them to cut my armoured which took quite a while, I asked them, I said look do you have any of this Quinetic stuff? It does look really good. I, was, I actually originally quoted for a WISE control system where you bring everything back to like a WISE box. It's a box that's got four channels in it and you can switch things independently from the box. This works a little bit more independently to that. Whereas an example is this light fitting itself, which is basically the same price as a normal light fitting of the same size and the same wattage. That light fitting, it has a technology built into it. Now there's a number of switches as well. Use a, there's like a wall mounted switch, there's a switch which you can stick in the back of a, um, a grid system and there's a key fob. So um, hopefully there's some other things available soon as well because I'll be perfectly honest with you, the switches that you do have available, I don't think they look very nice. They look like something you'd put in a child's bedroom but they do the job and I, I just love the fact that it's, it's just so independent. I'm going to put three of these on here, they're all going to be switched together. But if you, for some bizarre reason, wanted to switch them independently, you could. You can control a couple of floodlights or some sort of you know, nice looking decor lights. But turning them on and off, that's that's the tricky bit. And this, all this wireless stuff that's coming about now is fantastic. It's really making things a lot easier. It's a big game changer because you don't have to worry about running cables down and destroying people's houses with uh, chasing out cables and putting light switches in. Here's another little example of dimated screws. Now look, they look nice, didn't they? A lot better than using a countersunk one, so uh, that's me all over, that is. I don't know if you guys have seen these before, but these are actually earthing glands for whisker boxes. So you can earth your SWA with these. You've got a couple of little 4mm nuts here. They'll clamp down onto your gland there so you get a nice surf connection.
I think it's just doing this to wind me up now. Look at this, look. There you go. Is it just one now? Not both of them. Neither of them. Just the bat one. Just the bat one again. Nothing. Both of them. Oh my word. All right, so it's done. I'm I'm fairly happy with it. I mean, it's a nice little job, really, wasn't it? The um the quinetic. I don't want to slag it off too much. It's a really good idea. I love the idea. It just obviously has some. There's just some things it can't do, and unfortunately, it was the very first thing I tried to do with it. So I, I imagine if I was to look in manufacturer instructions, it, it might actually say don't try and link one switch to more than one light. But I, I didn't look. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. I, I haven't actually looked. But um, what I'll do to get over that is I'll I'll have to disconnect them from working via the switch, and I'll, I'll buy another module. And I'll just hardwire them into the module, so the module will turn on and off. And if you flick, if you hit the fob, or you flick the switch and it doesn't recognise it, and you could just hit it again and it would come on. So, so then it, I'll get around it that way. So I will have to make a return to this job. But yeah, apart from that, it wasn't too bad. I've told the customer about that um, about that dodgy wire and we've isolated that. And uh, I, to be honest, I'm by the looks of it, I think I'm gonna have to call up the DNA myself. She's gonna get me the details because. She doesn't feel very confident in doing it. But anyway, apart from that, I've, I've enjoyed myself, and uh, thanks for watching.